I, uh, I speak all over the country. I've been <clears throat> had the opportunity to speak many times, and I always ask audiences how many jarheads in the, in the room. And uh, <clears throat> I usually see one, maybe two, but most often none. And when I've come to the lacrosse convention, this is my third time in the last just few years, uh, I've met more Marines. So what I'd like to do is ask uh, any jarhead to stand at this time. So let me see you stand. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> that is amazing. That is amazing. That, that is a record. And I, I'm grateful for it. You know, the theme of FCA is to influence. And in the military, particularly the Marine Corps, the one thing they emphasize all the time, as coaches emphasize things, is physical fitness. So I've tried to influence people that I've met over the years the importance of physical fitness. And I have failed miserably. But there is one person that I was able to convince, and that was my grandmother. I grew up here just north in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and uh, I remember going to Cementon, where everybody in that town worked at the cement mills. You know, like my dad worked at Bethlehem Steel. Everybody was blue collar, cement mills or steel mills. I said, Grammy, I don't know if I've ever been around anyone who had such a spirit for life, with such a great attitude. And uh, let, let me just say this, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be coaching and I, want, I just want to get you excited about the possibility of exercise. I said, I would love to see you live for many, many years because you influence so many people. I said, Grammy, here's the deal. You turned 65 today. That's why I came to see you. I want to encourage you to walk every day three to five miles. And I can hear her with her Pennsylvania Dutch accent, yes, I'm going to do it. And sure enough, she went out with me and she was walking. And the next thing you know, she told me she was walking every day. Every day, three to five miles, three to five miles. And just last week, she turned 99. And we have no idea where she is. <laughs> For you young guys, you don't understand, but as you get older, you will. <clears throat> why, why do I come back to the lacrosse convention as much as possible? I walked into this hotel several years back and I was asked to go to breakfast with Sean McNamara, who, has, who I highly respect, and Dan Britton, who of some of you know, who was a first round pick for the Baltimore Thunder, who is my executive vice president for international ministry. And Sean and Dan said, you're gonna meet a gentleman named Peter Cohn and we're gonna have breakfast. Folks, did you hear what people said about Peter? Now I can say I'm here for you, but I'm here to honor Peter Cohn. I have met more dignitaries, senators, uh, you can't imagine, owners of teams, uh, the, the uh, founder of FedEx, he and I were infantry officers in Vietnam together, but we never met each other, he always wanted to meet me, I always wanted to meet, I've met unbelievable people in the last eight years in the position God has called me, never have I met a man like Peter Cohn. Now why am I mentioning that? What are they going to say about you? You know, we, we, use, we throw this word around legacy all the time. What are they going to say about you? You only get one shot at this. I'll tell you what, he's out of the park. And I think one of the reasons why we so, so much remember him, he was enjoyable to be with, and he was a servant. There's no question. This ministry called FCA has four core values. Integrity. He was always honest. Serving, that he did. Teamwork, oh my goodness. And excellence, always. We preach that in our ministry, and I like to think that our staff that's here, who, have, by the way, has such a heart for you. You know, the crowd is a little bit sparse, but let me tell you, those that are here today, I know have an interest, not only in FCA, but in Jesus Christ. There's no greater place in America when you take the love of sports and your passion for lacrosse 
and Jesus Christ and put the two together than FCA lacrosse. The Kelly family I've gotten to know over the last eight years. I knew Frank when I was on the national board still coaching in the NFL. I'll tell you this. I've met a lot of people, and I'm not just saying this because of his presence. You want to get something done? You go to Frank Kelly. And his family circles the wagons, and they get it done. 25 years ago, would you ever imagine that we had over 120 teams across America in lacrosse, from California to Maryland, from Colorado to New York, and parts in between, like in Cincinnati, Ohio? Do you realize that we have staff all over this country who want to support this ministry and get involved? And you can send young people to camp at Gettysburg and hopefully more college campuses where young people can be influenced by men and women like yourself, like the college athletes that all these high school kids look up to, like the pro players that all these kids look up to, and have an opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ as I learned in 1972 when I went to my first FCA conference and who's standing behind the podium speaking but a gentleman by the name of Roger Staubach. He won the Heisman Trophy at the Naval Academy. He was soon to be the future Hall of Fame quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys and he stood in front of 700 boys and as I sat on the third row listening to Roger Staubach speak, and I looked back, they were motionless. They were like mannequins, not, not even moving. The impact that he had on those people, including me. I was a huddle leader there, so was he. He and I happened to be on this three-on-three -three team we played the whole week, and I'll never forget, he ran over, picked up his Bible. He was heading off to be a huddle leader. Can you imagine being 15, 16, or 17 years old? in a group of 10 or 12 boys, and Roger Staubach's your huddle leader? <laughs> and he picks up his Bible, and as I'm running in one direction, he goes, hey, Les, don't forget this. This book right here, he was pointing to his Bible. He said, it's diametrically opposed to what the world says we're to do. Why, why did I remember that? It was 1972. That was 41 years ago. Because Roger Staubach said it. Not Pastor Jones. When a coach or an athlete who lives the life that young people see, like Peter Cohn, like Roger Staubach, like so many others that are probably in this room that I don't know you personally, do you realize the light you're bringing in the darkness? You know what's sad is? This room should be packed. But you know what? It's called recruiting. It's called bringing interest. These people have been working for 25 years to make FCA lacrosse what it is today. And so I'm going to ask you, challenge you as you challenge your athletes, maybe make a difference. I'd love to come back to the convention in a couple years and see standing room only. I go to the baseball. I go to the basketball. I go to the football. I've seen the track. I've seen the trainers. We have 13 events like this nationwide. And I can tell you this, that you're here because you care. You don't have to tell me that. I can sense that. Let me tell you about caring. I really believe that God put on my heart, I got a piece of paper here I'm going to read. Listen to these statistics, sports and statistics. 12 million young people will use drugs or narcotics in a one-year period. 3,300,000 have serious drinking problems. One million will run away from home. 500,000 will attempt suicide. 250,000 young ladies will give birth to children and yet not be married. There will be 378,000 abortions. And five million young people will be victims of broken homes. What's that number say right there? 1985. I flew into Boston, Massachusetts, got picked up, went to Foxborough High School, uh, Foxborough, Massachusetts. Uh, I was the new offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots. Uh, they had just fired the entire staff. Uh, I don't boastfully say, but I think you're familiar with that league, NFL, not for long. And uh, we moved into town, they moved everybody out, and uh, only one other time had a team gotten fired their coaching staff, 
come in, put a staff together, and go to the Super Bowl, as we did that year. Prior to that season, I got a phone call, and they asked me to go to Rochester, New York, where I know it's a hotbed for uh, lacrosse. By the way, Jimmy Page, I met some people on the elevator and introduced myself from Greece, New York, where you're from, a suburb of Rochester, just so you wanted to know. And I, there I was, the offensive coordinator, standing in front of a crowd and sharing with a people. At a high school, I was invited to share my faith, and I read those statistics, and I've kept them ever since. Why is that? I don't know, but I know this. You know where Rochester, New York is. You know the hotbed of lacrosse. And let me ask you this question. Are things getting better since 1985? What do you think? Better yet, what do you think we're going to do about it? Well, I can tell you one thing. FCA is doing an amazing job going across this country, making a difference. We've been in 45 states at least twice. We've seen this ministry go across this America and truly is making a difference. Statistics. I don't know if you're into statistics, but maybe, maybe here's a few stats. Did you know that the Major League Baseball lifespan is seven pitches. D did you know that all polar bears are left-handed? <laughs> and for you guys that grew up on the farm, you know this, you can lead a cow up the steps, but you can't lead it down. And here's another interesting statistic. It's physically impossible to lick your elbow. <laughs> and, and here's one more statistic. Nine out of 10 of you will try to lick your elbow before the day's over. <laughs> Well, as a coach, I thought, uh, I, you know, when you, when you have an opportunity to speak to an audience, what is it they're going to take and run with? I mean, because we've done research. We bring in the gurus of communication in our ministry because so many of our people have to stand up and speak almost every week. And we've learned this about communication. 20 minutes from now, you'll forget 50% of what I'm going to say. 48 hours from now, you'll remember one thing. And maybe a year later, you'll still remember one thing. That's it. So here's a thought. As a coach, being a part of teams for, 13, for 32 years with 13 different teams, I always said to the players and the staff, we have to ask ourselves three questions. Who are we? Let me tell you who the Fellowship of Christian Athletes are. It's the largest Christian sports ministry in the world. And we're 58 years strong. Why? Because of teammates like you. Where are we going? I can remember standing in front of the offense with the New England Patriots, with the Tennessee Titans, and saying, we're going to win our division. We're going to get in the playoffs. That's where we're going, and we're going to make it to the Super Bowl. Those two years when we inherited a team that had a ton of talent, but the culture was terrible, the staff didn't get along, they all spent time having better ideas, and there has to be great staff harmony. Who are we? Where are we going? We're going across America to make a difference in the lives of coaches and athletes. And how are we going to get there? with relationships that are being built to show men and women results so that we can have resources to make a difference in the ministry. Just so you know, coaches, the Kelly family and a handful of others that are on the board, and we have a great lacrosse board. I've been to two national lacrosse board meetings because I care about this ministry, and I love your sport. I wish someone would have introduced me to it. I was a boxer, a Golden Gloves boxer. Thanks so much for introducing me to boxing. Oh, my goodness. I still have people standing. They stare at my nose. I go, God, you got something in your nose. No, I don't. I got slits in my nose, you know, from boxing. You know, I didn't miss every jab. <laughs> but I wish I'd have known about lacrosse, but I didn't. It's an exciting, fantastic, yes, fast-growing sport. So don't forget, who are we? FCA, where are we going? We're going across America. How are we going to get there? With teammates like you. Now, we emphasize four things. 
One of them is this. Coaches. I honestly believe, as Billy Graham said, and I will quote him, a coach will influence more lives in one year than most people will in a lifetime. Can I support that? I can definitely support that. I started my coaching career at the University of Colorado. I was what's called a graduate assistant. I made $150 a month. I slept on a cot, that was a whole lot better in Vietnam, in a garage with no heat in Boulder, Colorado for 18 months, making $150 a month starting my career. My girlfriend, who was a press secretary for the U.S. congressman who was on Capitol Hill where I met her, and now we've been very happily married for 38 years. And by the way, Ryan, when people get my resumes, I've only been fired eight times. How about you guys? How many times have you been fired? Oh, my resume, man, it's impressive. But really, we always used to say in the league, your resume is right there on the camera. But in my resume, I always say, very happily married. And when people say, I've never seen that before. I am. I've been blessed. So my girlfriend would fly in, see to Denver, and good old Connie Falk, who was the gal who put me up in the garage, she, t she died at 95, and I stayed in touch with her ever since. But she'd let Preppy, I, I nicknamed my wife Preppy. She went to Berkeley. Don't you, don't you think that's appropriate, Preppy? Huh? <laughs> Doesn't work, but it's preppy. Preppy got to stay in their house. I was still in the garage. <laughs> 40 years later, there we were, just this September, 40-year reunion. These players, over 100 players came back, and I'm going to tell you something. I cried and I laughed for four straight days. Men in their 60s will tell you things you said, you did, you did for them, you encouraged them, you made a call to their parents, you remember taking them to the Dairy Queen and sitting down on a rock and talking, and you did this and you did that and you did this and you impacted me and now I'm a CEO of my company and every time I stand up I always tell them what you used to say and on and on and on and on. I had heard that coaches impact lives and I really believed it and for the last eight years I've been telling audiences that. I witnessed it. And you'll witness it someday too. If you live a life that's honorable to the Lord, they won't forget you. It's unbelievable what a coach can do. The platform they give you. God has given you this position. It's a perfect place to do what my vision is. And I hate to use the word my because my and I stink. But when I was asked by our chief operating officer one day, Coach, what is your vision for FCA? Because the vision has been clear for 58 years and our mission the same. I said, wow. I prayed about it and I said to him, within moments, God just made it real clear. You listening? Here it is. It's three eyes. Three eyes. To invade the world of sports. To influence athletes and coaches to impact America and this globe for Jesus Christ. You want to jump on board or not? You want to get out of your comfort zone? You want to go talk to a coach who doesn't know the Lord? I heard just the other day at the board meeting, there was a gentleman that we honored and put in the Hall of Fame, Ed Britton. Dan Britton's dad. Where's Dave? I'm telling you, this guy made a difference in the world of the cross. And he'd come into meetings and say, okay, put your hands up. How many, how many of you want the kids to go to hell? Put your hands up. Everybody would go, holy smokes, what's this all about? <clears throat> you can't imagine phone calls I've received 15 years later from a guy like Don Hasselbeck, who was the first string tight end in Cincinnati, Ohio, whose sons Tim and Matt played in the league. And I have stayed in touch with this guy since I recruited him in 1972. Fifteen years later, here's what I hear at the other end of the phone when I was the head coach of the Vikings. Hey, uh, Coach Ducko, I, I, I know you're a busy man. I just wanted to call you. It's so important. What is that, Don? I said, it's so fun to hear from you. I hadn't talked to you in several years. He said, Coach, here's the deal. I just told Betsy, and Betsy was his girlfriend in high school, that I actually recruited her more than I did Don because I knew she was going to tell him where to go to school. <laughs> you got the picture, right? In case you're involved in recruiting, that's how it works. You've got to find out who's going to tell them where to go. 
17, 18 year old kids, are you kidding me? Don said this at the other end of the phone. Coach, you used to preach Jesus. You used to track me down in the weight room. When you recruited me, you started talking about it in 72. When you coached me at Colorado, when you later coached me in the pros, I just need to tell you this right now. I just told Betsy, I want you to be the second person to hear it. What is that, Don? I just accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'd call that coaching. Super Bowl rings, yeah, I got them. National championship, yeah, I got them. High school state championship, God blessed me and allowed me to coach my son's high school team. Never coached high school. Greatest thrill I've ever had in coaching. For you that are high school coaches, you talk about a platform. Oh, my goodness gracious. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary for a state championship 5A that I'm not sure if Brent will ever see it again. Never saw it before. I'm going to leave you with this thought. This stuff right here that we're talking about, serious business. But here's what happens at these events this week. You're going to hear all kinds of speakers. You're going to go home. You're going to get a good night's sleep and forget about it. You're all creatures of habit. You may take one or two things. Some guy at a clinic tells you and you utilize it on your team to be a better coach. But maybe not. I've been in rooms with NFL players most of my life and they always sit in the same chair. Always. I go to board meetings, everybody sits in the same room. Same chairs. I go to executive meetings, everybody sits in the same chairs. Have the same mannerisms, and we're all creatures of habit. And until we're intentional about something, we don't make a change. I've always said everybody's in favor of progress. It's the changes we don't like. And that's the problem. But let me leave you with a thought. Take your mind's eye and go right to New York City and look at those two burning infernos on fire. How sad it is to see people jumping out of those buildings. How sad it is to see people running from the fire, running to save their lives, and yet you see men and women running to those burning buildings to really save lives who are going to sacrifice their life to run and save other people's lives. You see that right now? In your mind's eye? So I leave you with this thought. You listening? If a terrorist can die for a lie, then a Christian should live for the truth. Thanks for listening.